Reverend Van Parker? Here. Supervisor Staff? Here. Huh? Uh, entertain a motion to approve the previous town board meeting. Make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I will gather you down, Mark. I don't have a problem. Uh, Supervisor's financial report. April 2018, zoning fees $125. Five mortar franchise fee $18,414.07. Recycling, personal services, $459.60. Medical insurance reimbursement, $150.66. Police fees, $30. Ambulance fees, $11,383.60. Town clerk fees, Easy Pass Conservation, $252.78. Cell tower, $973.64. Justice fees, $14,852. Building permit fees, $2,179. Dog licenses, $107. Interest earned, $11.65. Central mail contractual, $86.71. Ambulance donation, $250. Planning fees, $200. Misha Ward district interest, $0.96. Cents. Wow. Higley settlement, $797.98 for a grand total of $50,000. $274.65. Communications for the month of May 2018. Uh, Mount Trefford, tonight we have two resolutions that are somewhat related. There is a resolution to allow the owners of the Rock Cut Cottage property to discuss with the DEP the possibility of being bought out under their flood buyout program. This is the last in a list of properties that have been notified of an upcoming DOT project for the replacement of the Route 28 bridge in Mount Tremper and the intersection with Route 212. We have a scheduled uh, short meeting for the public with the representatives from the DOT and Ulster County who will be there to discuss their schedule for the removal of the old green bridge in Mount Tremper, yeah. slated for late this summer and into the fall. The DOT project as of right now would entail a new bridge being built next to the existing bridge similar to the project in Big Indian, which is due for which is due to open the traffic before the summer. The meeting is scheduled for next Monday, May 14th at 6.30 p.m. here at the town hall. Any interested parties should attend as DOT will be available to answer any questions as best they can. Jobs. Uh, we have a resolution to hire a new part-time driver for the ambulance, and we welcome James Joyce on board. We also have been down a full-time EMT since the end of December and are proud to appoint Ernie Longy Jr. to that position. Ernie has worked for the ambulance for many years and follows in the footsteps of his father, Ernest Longy Sr., our longest serving full-time employee. And lastly, we have not had any luck finding a replacement for Warren Tutt, our previous code officer building inspector. We have worked with the county to scour the civil service list to find a suitable candidate, but no one is up to the task. As such, we can now advertise for the position with the general public. The position is being offered at $16.50 per hour, is full-time at 35 plus hours per week, with benefits following the three-month probationary period. Anyone interested in the position should contact my office here at Town Hall, where we can provide you an application and a list of qualifications. Miscellaneous, uh, Eric's department is in need to replace a 25-ton trailer and a 10-foot dump body from one of the trucks. Anyone interested in bidding should contact the highway department for the specifications. We were also recently informed the bleachers at Glenbrook Park had deteriorated to the point where many of the onlookers were spending more time removing splinters of fiberglass from their posteriors than enjoying the game. So the highway crew removed the offending bleacher and we need to replace it. And lastly, now that it has finally stopped snowing, we're looking for volunteers to assist in installing a few pieces of playground equipment we have several articles that will be placed at different parts throughout the town, and we're looking to do the install over the weekend of May 19th. If you're able to assist us, please send us an email or call my office. Um, our next regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 4th at 7 p.m. And lastly, as a little note, if anybody's interested in trivia, I will be the host of Trivia Night at 7 p.m. at the Zephyr this Wednesday, if you'd like to attend. Good time. If, Joyce, do you have a Sure. Okay, so we need to talk about birth or death first, so let's do the birth for that happy one. Uh, our first birth in Shandaken this year was Quillen David Stephen Hoffman Min, born at home in Phoenicia at 915 on May the 4th, 2018, 
He is 7.8 pounds, 21.5 inches long, healthy. And the parents are Helen and John Hoffman. So that's our first birth in Chandigarh. We don't get many anymore, but we get a few. And now, so we'll go to the other thing. As you may know, the town had to take over the maintenance and control of the Shandaken Rural Cemetery. See how they segued into that? <laughs> and here on Route 28, uh, this entitled us to receive grant money from the State Cemetery Board to help pay for repairs and maintenance. After about two years of paperwork and phone calls and meetings, we finally got the word the other day that we will be getting money to pay for a special mower, two weed whackers, and best of all, replacement of the front part of the fencing which is all rusty and horrible looking, and repair all the gates. We have broken gates, gates are on the ground, and it really looks horrible. So we're going to get that all spruced up this spring. Also, I want to try and get a, a volunteer group to get it really cleaned up. We want to clean up some of the stones and, and do some other things that, you know, we just need a lot of nice volunteers would be nice. So also, if you need to find where the <coughs> one is in the cemetery, there is a map that we did that's on our website on shandaken.us and it's under the About Shandaken pull down menu. If you need to find loved ones or if you wish to purchase real estate there, you can see what we have available and the prices. So uh, that is kind of a great <coughs> kind of rule, so you want to get your feet in there now. Okay, uh, upcoming events. Uh, Phoenicia Playhouse is presenting Moon Over Buffalo uh, weekends until May 20th. Call in for tickets at 688-2279. Tech time at the Phoenicia Library is this Wednesday, 3 to 5.45, help with computers and technical problems. Uh, Morton Memorial Library in Pine Hill has Children's Saturday, this Saturday, May 12th. They're uh, making Mother's Day cards at 10.30. Big Indian Native American Cultural Center at Pine Hill Community Center having a turtle rattle workshop on May 12th, 11 to 3. Uh, music night at the Pine Hill Community Center with a DJ, May 12, 8 to 11 p.m. And the Thai Chi classes for arthritis are at the Parish Hall starting this, you know, next Tuesday through Thursday, on Thursdays, starting May 15, 12.45 to 1.45, twice a week for eight weeks. So this is something by the, uh, the county's putting out. All these events here are free. Uh, computer fixers at Phoenicia Library on Friday, May 18th, 5 to 7.45. Drums along the Asopus by the Big Indian Native American Center, May 19th, 11 to 4 at the Indian Park. Fish Frenzy at Bel Air Beach, catch and release program, fishing poles available. Sign up at the Pine Hill Library or meet at Bel Air Beach on Saturday, May 19th, 2 to 5. Chicken Barbecue, Shandaken Memorial United Methodist Church, Saturday, May 19th, 4.30. Take out five to seven. Phoenicia Arts on Main Street. Phoenicia is having a um, live artist demo with Christina Varga on Saturday, May 17th, 5 to 10. And lastly, <laughs> Family Fun and Fish Day at Wilson Park, Mount Trevor is Sunday, May 20th, 1 to 3.30. Call 688-3047, extension 3, to sign up. The DEC will provide fishing supplies, crafts for the kids, and a barbecue. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Oh, the Spring Fling Flea Market and Bake Sale is at the Shandaker Memorial United Methodist Church, Saturday, May 26, 93. Hey, you want this? You can go to all of them? You up for election soon? <laughs> Anybody else yeah. have any other announcements? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that, we'll move on to communications. I have several members here from Montiora Central School District to present this year's budget.
This is an increase of a little over 2%. Um, you will also see this year we have um, put up a proposition to purchase some vehicles. We have two buses, a small bus and a large bus. There'll be a little bit more about that later in the presentation. And much like we have in the past, we are using a little over two and a half million to reduce the levy um, from our fund balance. And also, much like we have in the past several years, we're allocating some money from our fund balance to do a little more um, capital work. So our focus this coming year is on purchasing a new uh, press box and bleachers. Uh, anybody who is familiar with the press box and bleachers that are in place at our football field knows that they are very, very old. They have long since outlived their useful life. Um, we actually have concerns about their safety and it's time to get a new set up there, some handicap accessibility, and just to make it um, be a little more friendly too. And now that our varsity football program is back, um, we're really hoping to increase school spirit and get more people to come to our games so we have to have appropriate uh, facilities for that. In terms of staffing, uh, we've worked really hard to try and be strategic about our staffing and about our reductions. Um, so we have three staffing reductions that are all through attrition. So we have people that are retiring and we have uh, identified areas where we can move forward without um, cutting any programs, but we're eliminating some positions. And we have more than, more than three people retiring, but these are the positions that we felt we could move forward um, reducing without um, having negative impacts of layoffs. Um, so as we move forward, we are going to continue to do that as much as we can and make sure that um, just because someone retires, we're not automatically replacing those positions without really looking to see how we can uh, still fulfill the needs and service our students without necessarily replacing everybody just automatically. Um, I'm going to let our assistant superintendent of business talk about taxes. Uh, so, hello, as Victoria said, my name is Monica Leclerc. I'm actually a 1984 graduate of Ontura, um, and I'm happy to be back. Um, so, the levy that we're looking at for 1819, as you know, much like, much like the town, the school district is also um, has the tax cap that it has to um, work within. So, this for this upcoming year, we were looking at a tax cap of approximately 3.63%. Um, however, um, we are um, looking at a levy of 2.98%, so approximately a $1.2 million increase. So from $41 million, $338,014 up to $42 million, $571,819. Um, so if you look, I kind of wanted to show you historically where the levy has been for Ontario. As you can see, uh, historically, the district has, tries to do a good job of, of keeping the levy as low as possible. Basically, um, from 1314 through 1718, it's been a total of a 2.64% increase. So, um, since 1314 till today, 2.64, uh, as I said, we've tried very hard to, to be mindful of, of where the levy has been. Um, the other piece that I kind of thought was important, while uh, a lot of times people hear levy and the total amount of money that the district has collected, it's also important to understand that just because the levy is going up 2.98% does not necessarily mean that your taxes are going to be going up by 2.98%. So if you look at this, this is specific to the town of Shandaken, and I kind of did it for all the towns we went to visit. Um, and you can see the, the, where the total assessment within the town has changed over the years. That has actually helped keep the tax rate not to be as high as the levy increase. Um, with the exception, you'll, you'll notice in 15 16, um, and that had to do with um, a large assessment change. Um, and, I think, and then, of course, in 17 18, Emerson went back on the tax roll. So, what happens is uh, Emerson had been a pilot. So, its taxes were collected separate and outside of the levy. Um, now it's back on the tax roll. So, since that money was originally out of the tax levy, now it's in the tax levy, your tax rate should actually be less than that because it's now within all of the rest of the assessment. Um, so whereas I had said the, the overall tax levy for five years was 2.64, the overall tax rate was 1.2. So um, the hard part is I can't tell you today 
what the tax rate will be because we don't get the assessments until July. So while I hope and pray that will be lower, I can't I can't tell you now what it is. But anyway, if you look then on page seven, um, kind of gives you an idea of where the district is spending its money. As you can tell, uh, more than 80% of a school district's budget is in instruction and employee benefits. I'm sure, much like your own, um, you know, contractual costs and uh, health, health insurance and retirements um, are kind of our number one cost drivers. Um, in addition to that, you'll see, you know, transportation at seven and a half percent. I'm sure I don't have to tell you, Ontario is a very large district, so we transport kids um, pretty far. Um, and then the other minor areas, operation and maintenance, um, general support would be uh, legal, um, BOCES, uh, insurance, things like that, and then our debt service, just paying our, our bonds. Uh, page eight is just another kind of another way of looking at that. It's, it's what the state likes to call the three-part budget. And it's the three main components that make up a school district budget with programs being the largest piece, uh, capital being our facilities, and then administrative being those kind of ancillary to legal insurance and things like that. Um, as Mr. McLaren had mentioned, we are looking to uh, fund capital projects with some of the money. Um, the press blocks and bleachers, the, the money will allow us to demolish what's currently there, replace it with uh, new new um, modern press box and bleachers, and again, allow for handicap accessibility, which it currently does not have. Um, we're also um, replacing a small shed that will also come out of that, um, that fund. So what you will see on the ballot next week will be a proposition for the expenditure of $55,577,578. In addition, you will see a second proposition for the buses um, an amount not to exceed 175,000. Um, again, one large and one small bus. And in addition, there will be there will be um, two open board seats. There will be three three uh, names on the um, ballot for two open seats for three year terms starting on July one. Um, other question I get a lot is what happens if the budget is defeated? While historically we we pass budgets. Um, more often than not, <laughs> this is a good way of putting it. Um, if the budget does go down, the district has basically three choices. They can either go out with a, the same budget, they can go out with a different budget, or they can go straight to what's called a contingency budget. Um, a second budget vote's held then on June 19th. Um, if a uh, budget goes down a second time, then the district is required to go to, straight to contingency. And what contingency means for a school district is that we're limited to the amount of levy that we can raise and we're limited to what we raise in the current year. So we would not be able to increase our levy, which would require, if you look at the bottom of the page, of an additional $1.2 million in reductions. So, <coughs> the timeline, what's left? So a week from tomorrow, we'll start with April 3rd, the board adopted the budget. We had a public hearing in Woodstock last Tuesday. Um, so next Tuesday is the budget vote and the Board of Elections. Uh, from 2 to 9 p.m., it'll be at the three elementary schools along with the West Hurley Firehouse. Uh, it'll be a half day of school for those elementary kids. They would love that. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, if the budget goes down and we're required to do a revote, that will happen on June 19th. So, and just at the last page, if anybody would like to talk a little more, get a little more details. Um, my information is on the back page. My door is always open. We love visitors. We don't get a lot of adult visitors. We get a lot of kid visitors. We like adult visitors too. Um, any questions? Yeah. Um, so, was there a loss in other revenues coming in other than tax levy? Is that why the levy is going up? The pilot. Um, yeah. Well, and state aid. And state aid. Unfortunately, we're considered a wealthy district. Um, so whereas state aid may have gone up for a lot of districts, it doesn't generally go up for Ontario. So, um, yeah, so that was part of it. But uh, really it's the uh, expenditure side that kind of drove the, uh, the slightly higher increase than the previous. It's the first time that the retirement costs have actually gone up the last, since the last four years for schools. So the last four years we've been kind of been able to capture that savings. Um, there is no savings in retirement, and health insurance is obviously still going up. Uh, and it's also the first time that um, the consumer price index has been over 
in about four years.